Now it could be that as a certified fraud examiner, you could be asked to be an expert witness, in which case it's good to know a little bit about how that works. Um, an expert witness is not somebody who's a witness to the crime, right, or has something to say about the crime itself. They're just um, ha are an expert in that field. Um, an expert wit witness can give an opinion. In a trial, everything is about the facts. What did you see? Did you sign this document? Things like that. Yes or no. Facts. But an expert witness can actually give an opinion. In your opinion, is this the defendant's signature? In your opinion, um, is this what caused the fraud? Right? Things like that. Um, so experts, so the judge gets to, the judge of the trial gets to decide if somebody's expert enough to be an expert witness. And they'll use a process called voir dire. And they may ask questions about their qualifications. Okay, where did you go to school? What is your degree in? How long have you worked at this? Things like that. That's called voir dire. Um, as an expert witness, you would need to understand the fraud standards. I mean the audit standards and of course you would have to understand that they fall into general standards field work standards and reporting standards we won't go into those but obviously as if you're performing an expert witness as an auditor you would know those standards um, there's a list of do's and don'ts. Um, you can check your book for those. Um, um, just sort of tells you how to be if you're being an expert witness, which some of it's common sense. Um, you know, listen, concentrate, um, just telling the truth. Um, uh, only respond to questions things like that. Um, don't volunteer more than you're asked for is very important. Um, always pause a little bit before you answer. That way if the lawyer on your side, because as an expert witness you'll be hired by an attorney on one of the sides. So the lawyer on your side may want to jump in and have an objection or something. You want to hear that before you just start answering. Um, uh, so, you know, you're, you're trying to come across, do things, whatever you're doing, do things that are helping you come across as somebody who knows what they're talking about, who, um, uh, who their opinion would, is something the jurors should listen to, right? They should think, okay, this person has an opinion, I need to value their opinion, uh, the attorney on the other side, whatever side you're on, the other side's attorney is going to have a chance to talk to you and they're going to try and kind of mess you up or get your goat. Um, even not ask questions but make a statement that could even seem rude or mean to you. But obviously none of it's personal. They don't even know you. Um, so you just stay calm and just do your job. And you're, the only job you really have is to just answer questions honestly. Right? So... Um, that's it. You just answer honestly questions and not more than what they ask for. I say the number one thing is don't answer more than what they ask for. Of course, always answer honestly. That's you're under oath. Um, but yeah, just be yourself, I would say, is the main thing. So there's quite a few lists here. Um, so you can go through that in your book. And thanks for watching.